Do you relate to any other ethnic groups besides your own? A bunch of Asians are discussing this on the internet right now. Yeah, we gotta talk about this viral thread on Asian American Reddit titled, which ethnic group besides your own do you feel close to? It reads, as a Korean American, I feel close to different ethnicities for different reasons. I think Japan is culturally pretty similar to Korea. Social hierarchy, collectivist, historically isolationist, use of honorifics, bowing. Regarding physical appearance, I think as a population, on average, we tend to resemble Northern Chinese people more. And I also feel somewhat close with Taiwanese Americans because I spent a lot of time with them growing up in university. Mm. So this was really interesting. This was an interesting post. You know why it was interesting, Andrew? Why? Because I actually never thought about being Asian in this particular you, way. You, David, of all people, I've never thought about it this way. Yeah. Wow. All right. So, guys, we're going to talk about this because uh, I think a big question is, how do you relate to groups outside of your own? Now, in America, I think it's a little bit easier because if you grow up here, it's a very diverse place, right? All different types of people. So even in your neighborhood, you grow up with each other and you end up relating to each other. However, have you ever thought about why you relate to these groups of people? I think this is where the critical thinking and the analysis comes into play, guys. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys right now and let us know if you enjoy this video. Also, comment down below who you yeah, relate to. It was really... Like interesting to hear everybody's responses, especially because me and you have never had this discussion before, and I don't even know if I fully agree with it, but apparently, Andrew, maybe a lot of people do. This guy was mentioning, of course, historical traits between countries, ancient culture transitioning into modern culture, physical appearance, Andrew. This is probably one of the most un-PC parts to talk about, but would you agree that like people who look the same may relate to each other? Uh, just like, you know, when you put on an alligator suit, it's like you can go into the alligator swamp and they won't attack you, but also it affects like how you, the, the outside world treats you when you look the same as somebody else. Oh yeah, exactly, because if they identify you as part of the group and they treat you better because of it even subconsciously even though they know you're not actually part of their group it still helps yeah for sure i mean it has to do with human incentive right who who brings you in who accepts you who gives you a high ranking or a good ranking treats you with some value and or some hoppers in this thread even stated that they only felt at home at native american protests on sacred land because that's who they felt like hoppers actually looked the most like was Native Americans. That's interesting. Um, it also has to do with proximity and the projects you're involved in, right? Andrew, a lot of people develop hyper-diverse friend groups when they're in like the military, they join martial arts, some sort of like random team sport. It really bonds people mm -hmm. together because it's such like a unique set of experiences or project to be a part of, right? Yeah, if there's some unifying culture or experience, kind of like in the Bay Area, a lot of times people will be like, oh, my friend group's super diverse, but we're all like repping the yay area, hey, you know? we're bonded by the hyphy. Yeah, but then you have like a group that's like a white guy, a black guy, a Latino guy, a Asian, like three Asian guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all together, you know? I mean, which is cool too, because that's a unifying culture. Yeah. How much of a global citizen do you identify yourself as? Because Andrew, some people, they identify as their parents have coached them or just as how their parents identified which is usually more hanging out with their own people or their own tribe and other people really like look in the mirror every day and subconsciously or overly consciously uh -huh. go I am a global citizen. Exactly, exactly. So and there's a lot of factors, right? Oh, there's even more, you know, there's so many um, and I feel like and may, maybe we can also explain it through our own experiences because we're going to get in the comment section of what other people thought but I think it's important to point out like how do you feel about this question? One, do you agree with, does this question make any sense? And two, who else do you relate to or did you relate to growing up? Yeah, let's get into our personal experiences, Andrew. For me, I thought this thread, like I said before, was interesting because I actually do not think this way. I've always more thought about it Why on an individual basis, right? However, there are going to be certain personality archetypes or experience rep patterns of, uh, of people that you want to bond with. But I never really thought about it in terms of like, oh, I'm gonna just relate to this race or that race. However, I do agree that certain cultural upbringings or immigration waves or outputs, like probability wise, they're more likely gonna output certain personalities and you might relate to those personalities, but every group has every archetype. Right, but I will say this, there's a difference between relating to and wanting to be part of that group because you could be self-hating and just because you relate to that group in your background, <laughs> you don't want to relate to with that right, group. Right? Right. You know so I mean? you're saying you studied your own group, you know about all the major archetype probability outputs from your community, and you hate them all. Hey, man, a lot of people do this, <laughs> man. Let's be honest. Um, yeah. So like I said, I I've never really personally thought about it this way. Um, did you, do you feel like this is a valid question or the majority of people think this way? Maybe not yeah, you? Yeah, it's hard to say a whole group because just because... We have black friends growing up. Does that mean I relate to every single black person? Or just because I'm Chinese, that doesn't mean I want to be friends with every Chinese person I meet. 
you know, hell no, you know, but I guess that I'll say this about being Chinese is that when you know enough Chinese people, for example, let's just say Chinese, then you've seen different archetypes. So when you meet another Chinese person, you can relate it to somebody else that you know. Does that mean you want to, you're automatically going to be their friend? No, not necessarily. But, you know, just like if you meet someone else, a white or a black person, then you're like, oh, I had a friend like this kind of relates to me. I feel comfortable with this person. This is cool. You know what I mean? I would say maybe the most unique group of people that I had a lot of contact with growing up. And I still, they're still my friends to this day, even though I don't get to see them as often Is like growing up, I had a lot of black friends, but specifically, I guess some people will call them like very middle-class or upward mobile black friends in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, I remember always like beatboxing, freestyling. Uh, They were more into R&B, singing music, soul child, but we used to all listen to Master P and No Limit together and and hoop and AAU together too, you know? So I felt like at least as far as that side of me goes, that's like, I guess that's one set of experiences I would say that is less statistically prevalent in the Chinese American community. Mm -hmm. Like not everybody grows up with a bunch of middle-class black friends. Yeah, and then I would say like growing up, uh, for me, I, you know, as we know, we ha- I had a lot of Vietnamese and Filipino friends. And that was like, because they were Asian. They were proud of being Asian. Maybe they weren't Chinese, but they were proud of being Asian. But they also had that little bit more free wild side where they were, you know, break dancing, playing a lot of basketball, playing a certain style of basketball. Guys, because there's like Chinese leagues where to be honest, the style of basketball is maybe less street ball than when you're playing it with your other friends. No, and, it's and true. We play, I, I play Dude. a little bit more like street ball game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit. I think <laughs> That's, street ball to me is more fun, but if you want me to win, like there's like these Taiwanese leagues, Andrew, in, in New York, where it's, like, all these, like, yappies from the Ivy Leagues, the games don't have, like, a lot of sauce to them, but they're running whores. Oh, they're really pin, good. Pinch post, you know what I mean? All types of, like, elevator screens. But then you don't really get the, you know, the... Well, well they're playing, you know, the proper basketball, Yeah, they're right? playing basketball, basketball, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, but they're not hooping. Right. So, I guess for me, also, there's different things. Like, I like to... Maybe I like to go to uh, a certain type of club, but that, that's not where I would find a lot of like other Chinese people there. So, but I also, we also, I also eat a lot of Chinese food, which I also feel comfortable. So I think there can be different sides to people. Okay. Basically. So you can, you can relate to different groups of people, even depending on what activity you choose to do or what side of you is coming out. But would you agree that not necessarily everybody is that diverse? Like some people only hang out with like one or two different types of people. You guys let me know down Yo, below. Andrew, if we go to the, the dance hall club, I'm calling up. Jamaican Chinese Vince Chang because I need the Jamaican plug to go to the Jamaican spot. Well, you need but obviously to, not all Asians go to the Jamaican spot. You know, it's different. Um, anyway, let's just get into the comments section, Andrew. Somebody said, I'm Indian American. I always went to schools with a very small Indian American population despite being from New Jersey. Most of my friends ended up being Chinese or Koreans. Okay, so because most of his friends ended up being Chinese and Korean and now he probably relates somewhat to the culture, has had plenty of the food, maybe can say some of the phrases in the, in the language. Does that mean he relates to them when he meets another Korean or Chinese? Possibly. If you've been that exposed to another culture, that means when you meet another person from that culture, you're like, oh, oh, by the way, I've had like Kalbi Jim. Like, oh, yeah, like I've been to this Sundubu spa with my friends. Or like, oh, I like beef noodle soup. You know, then they can relate to more and more people. Yeah, I think, honestly, the, the, this is also the unspoken answer because it's like slightly less PC. It really has to do with like who you date, too. Like, if this yeah. guy's, like, dating some pretty good-looking Taiwanese or Korean girls, he, he's all he's in there, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, for sure. Um, interestingly enough, Andrew, our dad has a d- lot of Indian friends from growing up, whether it was his next-door neighbors growing up in Hong Kong. This is British colonial Hong Kong, by the way. So there was, like, a mm-hmm. lot of mixing going on at the time. Sure. His next-door neighbors growing up were Indian. And then dad was actually in an Indian study group in college. Yeah. Because guess what, Andrew? He said that the Chinese didn't want to study together, had no teamwork. Um, this guy said, I'm Vietnamese and all my friends growing up were Filipino for some reason. Maybe just a coincidence or maybe I just vibe with Filipinos. Um, yeah, I could see this. I think Vil- uh, Vietnamese and Filipinos, they could be like warm. Yeah. Like Both really- fun, fun people. Yeah. Um, this next guy said, I feel a kinship with a lot of Jewish people. There's a lot of Asian and Jewish stereotypes, racism, uh, or shared like racism against us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I-, I could see that. I mean, there's a lot of Jewish, Asian 
couples, to be yeah, honest. For like. example, this guy said, I'm Chinese Indonesian. This really resonates with me. For sure, I could see that, especially the situation, I guess, with Chinese in Indonesia. This guy said, I'm Filipino American or Filipino American. I seem to vibe well with Vietnamese, Chinese, and Indian people. My closest friends are at least one of the above. This person said, I'm Han Chinese, but I feel very Italian. Tortellinis are just cheese-filled wontons. Just because you have a, f a really good friend of that group... It probably does help you relate to other people in that group, but that doesn't mean you relate to that entire group. You know what it is? Because those people could all be outliers of their group yeah. where they're, like, very open-minded. I mean, like, for example, if a bunch of black sheep from different groups come together, then it's not really, like, that you relate to each other's group. It's that you relate to each other for being, like, the black sheep. Yeah. Uh, somebody said, if we went by preferred cuisine, I'd be Eritrean. Mm. And uh, I got some pictures here of Eritrean pasta, Somali pasta as well. Those are it's really, good. really underrated, by the way. Um, this guy said, I'm ethnically Chinese American, but I grew up in a Caribbean immigrant neighborhood in the U.S., so I feel the closest to that community. David, does it matter how much, like, you get accepted, too? Because, like... I think eventually if you try hard enough and you relate to the culture and you speak the language, people will end up accepting you as like an honorary member, right? People ha kind of have that title. Particularly if you're good looking though. Oh yeah, if you have <laughs> yeah. something to add, you know, I mean, if, yeah. you're, uh, if you're good looking or you're- Some sort of value, right? You have yeah. some ex extra value, of course, you know. But yeah, you're right. I think that there's, there's two types because sometimes some people want to be accepted by another group of people, but they don't become like that group. Or some people sometimes, like, run through, like, 10 out of 10 hoops to become a part of that group. Yeah. Um, this guy said, I'm Pakistani. Uh, Pakistani. I'm Indian, but one of my closest friend groups was Pakistani. Okay. Um, interestingly enough, Andrew, I had a Pakistani homie growing up whose parents ran the uh, non and curry shop in the city over. And um, I'm not saying this is stereotypical or not stereotypical. He had an arranged marriage. But uh, that girl was, like, really hot. And they're still together, and they got a loving family. However it works, man. Uh, this guy said, I'm Chinese and I vibe with Filipinos well. They're cool people. And someone said, oh my gosh, Filipinos are like the Cababaras of humanity. Everybody loves them. Because there's a meme right now, Andrew, saying Cababaras in Australia are like the least hostile like animal. They'll hang out with other animals. Wow, that's pretty funny. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Somebody said, I'm Southern Chinese, so I would say Vietnam. And uh, a group that isn't Asian would be the Latin community. So mm. uh, I saw a lot of these comments, Andrew. Southern Chinese with Vietnamese, they actually share a border. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it makes sense. I mean, anybody you share a border with, especially if your family is from that border area, that's like saying, oh, I'm from South Texas. I relate to a lot of Mexican culture. That makes complete sense to me. Right. Because you're saying South Texas has a lot of Mexican well, culture. Well, it like literally used to be Mexico. Right. Um, I think it has a lot to do with geography. Geography leads to climate. Climate leads to similar culture. Um, but I also think it has to do with socioeconomic uh, things, too, as well. And, uh, yeah, I think it also, if you really look at it, it has to do with, like, ancient spheres. You know, there's an ancient Sinosphere. There's an ancient Indiosphere and stuff like that. There's these, like, ancient like cultural spheres too that play into it. Oh yeah. No, I mean, if everybody's eating like curry, then you're like, oh, well the curry came from somewhere. You for know sure, I mean? for sure. Um, somebody said, I'm Filipino. I relate to a lot of Mexicans more than I relate to Asians. And it's because we're both Catholic. Some people echoed that. And some Filipinos were saying, I always felt outsided when I was in the ASU in college. But then another Filipino chimed in and said, that's so weird to me. I always felt like super accepted. You know what I feel like a lot of people nowadays are kind of like relating to each other on? Because I do feel like depending on where you come from from a culture you could almost say every culture relates to another culture in some way right you're saying depending on like how you mix and match yeah like and, and that's compare like, and contrast yeah that's like if you have a polish friend and you're a like chinese you could come up with some reasons how the polish family is similar to the chinese family Right, like right. there's not, it's not out. Like everybody can relate to everybody. Yeah, I would in agree some with way, that. Especially, and, especially traditional cultures. Any any right. family that is an immigrant literally can relate to another immigrant. Family. Yeah, I, I agree with you because culture. Let's just simplify it, Andrew. Let's say culture is made out of like fifty elements. You could find the elements that relate to each other because obviously, on some other aspects of culture, you guys are not going to relate. Yeah. and then more hyper focus on the points of relationship. No, maybe the food is really different. Food tends to be really different, but family values tend to be pretty similar. Right. Right? Uh, education tend to be similar. Hard work tend to be similar. Kind of like, you know, things like even religion can kind of be shared, so. This is some really interesting geography stuff, Andrew. This Vietnamese guy said he really relates to Greeks and Italians because he's like saying, Viets are sort of East Asian, but not fully East Asian, just like in the same way Greeks and Italians are Europeans, but they're sort of like off-white. 
they're viewed as like not full Western Europeans. So he was saying our position in Asia or East Asia is similar to Greece and Italy's position in Europe. That's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. But I mean, again, he probably has some Greek friends and found common ground. And I think this is the beautiful thing about this diverse world is that you think these two groups are not similar, but then you just talk and you chill and you just discuss who you are and you'll find out like, oh, I do relate to people from here. Right. Or maybe not everybody, but you relate to some people from here. Right. Um, this guy said, I'm Korean and I relate to Puerto Ricans. I've been around them my entire life and we also had a Catholic upbringing. I can't explain it well, but there is a toxic dynamic between Puerto Ricans and other Latinos that feels very similar between the toxic dynamic between Korean, Koreans and other Asians. <laughs> Yo, I'm not going to lie. This is hilarious. You know how, like, yeah, Puerto Ricans are uh, maybe talked down on other, like, Spanish groups, Latin right. groups, and then, like, Koreans sometimes are known to talk down on other Asian groups. It's funny. It's right, hilarious. Right, right. They're that's, a little that's exclusive. Like, They're a little bit different I, from everybody. And then, and then there's the whole comparison, like, I would say Puerto Ricans are like the Filipinos, too. Right, right. Similar like to... You said, like you said, man. You can you, relate you to can, anything. You can relate to... I wouldn't them. say... And then you could even make a, uh, you know, oh, there's Puerto Rican Chinese. So then the Chinese relate to the Puerto Ricans too. Right, right, right. Um, this guy said, I'm from Northeastern China. I went to school with a lot of Russian Jewish immigrants and I feel very close to them. They are generally very unreligious and highly educated, but not very wealthy, just like a lot of Northern Chinese. That's very relatable to me. And I feel like the cuisines are pretty similar as well because there's a lot of sauerkraut. And if we know, you know, we've done a bunch of stuff on Dongbei. Dongbei did take some influence, interestingly enough, from Russia due to some of the pickled cabbages and similar climate and right, cabbages right. and things like that. Um, I thought that was really interesting. Interestingly enough, Andrew, uh, Dombe actually had a lot of Russian Jewish uh, refugee camps for like many decades during World War I and World War II. It's interesting. Somebody said, are ABGs an ethnic group? Because that is the whatever type of Asian is an ABG, I relate to them. There was a, that was a pretty long thread. There was a lot of laughing about that. What do you think about that? Where they're saying it's not about ethnicity. It's more like, man, if you down with that ABG stuff, that's what I like. I don't care what I mean, country your friend parents groups are. can be all mixed when everybody's trying to party and have a good time too. You know, like, hey, I party with these guys. We all like to have a good time. It doesn't matter what race we are. You know what I found though? I will say this. The ASEAN, ABG, EDM, JDM world is a little bit more pan-Asian if you just buy into that culture than even the yappies are. Oh, yeah. That's what I found. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause can, and, and, there's a, and there's a not, and even if there is discussion about ancient cultural differences, like Japan versus Korea or Japan versus the rest of Asia, actually, everybody might mention it and then not even care. Well, I would say- Because they're sort of like not tapped into it. I would say, it, you know? to be honest, a lot of- like more to be honestly formally educated Asians tend to be a little bit more tied to their motherland and geopolitics, which ends up kind of separating them. Also, they tend to be more traditional right. and abiding by traditional rules. You hang out with your yeah. own kind versus AZN, ABG culture. That's just like, yo, if you're just down with this shit, yeah. you're it, good. And it's more blue collar to be honest. Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, no, you're right. And a lot of the elite yappies, especially if you're from a certain type of like family that's connected you almost like end up becoming this like diplomat or like ambassador for your group that's like and of course they're kind of divisive and kind of classy and polite at the same time anyway somebody said i'm taiwanese and i can find that koreans are the ones i relate to the most because they have a relatively high amount of christian affiliation and they koreans also tend to be more emotional and outspoken which i personally like them kind of acting like the italians of asia mm. you know what is interesting about this point andrew this Taiwanese person saying, I'm not outspoken. I know that Taiwanese or Chinese kind of have this docile, quiet reputation, but I like how the Koreans are because they're outspoken and fiery, but sort of like us. Oh. So it's almost like he's almost looking at to them in an in a aspirational way. Well, 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 you can look at a group and be like, hey, they're very similar to me, but they got a couple things that I like a little bit more. So I relate to them more. That makes sense. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, th I'm Chinese American from Fuzhou, Fujian. And I feel like I really relate to Sicilian people and Vietnamese refugees. And it was funny because I was thinking in my head that if you really think about it, Sicily with the whole mafioso thing, that does have a lot of relation to, and I'm not saying it's true or not, sort of the outlaw reputation of Fujian. Yeah, for sure. Um, David, I guess I, I, I want to bring this to... So, so if we say that as an Asian person, you can always find some common ground with almost any other culture to some extent. So then, and this is a little bit related to some other videos that we've made, but like, is that so 
is it so wrong then for certain Asians to grow up whitewashed and like Asian women or Asian guys grow up and be like, I just relate to white people, man. And I'm like, I just want to be with white people. Cause you're Cause saying I relate to that, white people. Cause you're saying that as proven in this thread and nobody wanted to say white people in this thread. Cause you know, this Reddit forum is not like that, but it's like, if you see a community that markedly scientifically has different interpersonal dynamics than your own, and you want those interpersonal dynamics or, or things or events more than the ones that your group has, is it wrong to jump to that? I mean, community? we have a cousin, a female cousin who you would say stands out in the family because she doesn't act like anybody else in the family. She is very bubbly, very like, I guess, like a blonde Touchy girl. Touchy feely. Yeah. Yeah. Like very, uh, fun and, and, uh, rambunctious. Is that a good word? Yeah, I would right? say she's just essentially acts more like a blonde person than a Chinese person immediately, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and she's part of the family. Obviously, she's our cousin, but I would say she stands out. So she grew up relating to that at least attitude, right? you know? So Yeah, I guess I it's guess, not really wrong. I, it's not wrong because different communities do have different things, right? Yeah. To be honest, I mean... I mean, um, I think first and foremost, you're going to relate to who you grow up around immediately, who you're exposed to, right? Right? Um, but also, if your family is not, like, also depends on how open your family is to you, you know? Yeah. Because if your family's super traditional and very exclusive and very, like, like, like to seclude you from other things, then you're going to have to find some other group outside of your environment to relate to. Yeah, this, Andrew, this Korean guy said he likes Chinese friend groups because they remind him somewhat of his Korean friend groups, but he can invite other races to the Chinese friend groups things where the Korean friends, they only want to keep it Korean, so he doesn't want to make it weird. That's actually pretty funny. This person says, I'm Indonesian, but I spend all my free time watching Japanese and Korean entertainment. I feel like deep in my soul, my soul feels possibly even more Japanese and Korean as much as it does Indonesian. I mean, how much does that have to play into it? Like we said, aspirational from an IRL perspective. This is aspirational from a pop cultural perspective, mm -hmm. from just consumption. Yeah. Um, and this guy had the last one saying, probably white. I grew up around more white people than Asians, so I probably identify with mainstream white American culture more than anything else. I'm not going to lie. This one did not get a lot of ups in the Reddit thread. No, that's oh, real, that's, though. That's real, though. No, that was probably one of the realest ones that nobody really wants to say, you know? But, like, it's America, right? Yeah. Well, um, Andrew, overall, like you said, is it right? Is it wrong? Or do you even question this line of thinking in general? Because this I thread, I mean, I got to, there was a bunch of responses I couldn't even get to. You can come up with some type of connection with almost any other group, any other cultural group somehow. I and mean, it's not just, it doesn't even have to relate to everybody 100%. You just relate to a few people and that can lead you down a path to understanding that people more and then you relating to more and more people from that group. But it all starts with some, it all starts with one other person from that group that you relate to. Yeah. And then you go in that way. I think once you see enough reps from like any community, you don't really think this way because once you've met like 100,000 people from every single group, you know that every group has every no, type of person. Cultures. Like, like, I feel like this thread, and I'm not blaming anybody, these are people, because, you know, our life is kind of different. We meet so many people on a day-to-day -day basis outside of, in, in like a million different fishbowls. If they're only just meeting in their life, they're associating with that one group of people that actually represents one sub-tribe of a sub-tribe of a sub-sub-tribe, and they're like sort of painting that whole group with that brush. Right. right. So, so it's not, I guess for me, I could see how a lot of people's lives, like they, it's easy to think this way and it's not wrong, but it's wrong in a statistical sense. Right, right, right. Yeah, so I don't know. Everybody's life is different. Hey, let us know in the comments down below who you relate to and why. Why do you have friends of this group? What about their culture do you relate to? And uh, yeah, let us know. It's a fun discussion. Hey guys, keep it civil in the comments section. Until next time, we the Hop Out Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.